I just said a quick prayer, like a real short quick prayer, just before I started this, because um, this one is, I think, more sensitive than the other episodes that I've touched on, and they're pretty sensitive, because it about, it is about a relationship between a person and God, and that person or persons in this case, being my family, specifically my mother and my sister. How these two narcissistic beings think they can also manipulate God? Like how far can someone take being manipulative? Trying to manipulate God is far enough. It is way too far and I say this one is a little bit sensitive because this is a trait or something that I'm I'm only realizing this now but then again all of this has just been a revelation this year and I know that it has been building up to this because looking at the past couple of years I see that in my adulthood God has been slowly building up to revealing this to me and what I'm also noticing because once you realize how narcissistic your family is and how emotionally abusive your family is you start seeing a lot of things things from the past things in the present how they are, how they speak, how they behave, you start noticing everything. Someone said, I think it was an article that I read, that people think being narcissistic is simply just loving yourself so much that you just want to look yourself in the mirror every two minutes. It is way beyond that. It is way beyond that. And real, the real narcissists don't even really do that kind of petty stuff. It's deep. Narcissism is more than, I mean, they do love themselves. They do really think they are special more than other people. But it's beyond just someone superficially loving themselves. It's deeper than that. It's part of it, but it's deeper. But what I'm also uncovering, and this one is... It's just like new information because what I've been realizing with just discovering this whole thing is it's almost like new information keeps being dropped in and um, I I keep seeing different sides of this. And one side that I'm now seeing is how they are manipulation because in as much as your family will try to manipulate you, emotionally abuse you, criticize you belittle you all those things you have to notice that they don't just do it to you this is why people who specialize in this area will normally say that don't take it personally don't take the narcissistic abuse even though it is towards you and directed at you it is not as personal as you would think because they also do it to other people just that other people don't get to see them or experience them to the extent that you get to experience them because you most likely get to spend more time with them. Like for me, I currently live with my family. And even if I wasn't living with my family right now, I grew up with my family. So I got to spend most of my time with them so even if you don't live with your family anymore you grew up with your family you got to spend most of your time with them but you also have to start noticing that their behavior even though it might not be to the extent that you experience their behavior is not only limited to you which I think maybe could help For one, to not take it personally. I'm still at the stage of taking it personally. I am hoping one day I won't. But um, 
some of the things they say and do, they still do scar me. Um, the things that they would consider to be just jokes or things that they didn't mean like that. You know, when someone makes you feel crazy, like, I didn't mean it like that, you know, or you took it too seriously, things like that. That's part of emotional abuse. That is part of emotional abuse. Don't justify it. Don't make it right. Don't think that you're over-exaggerating. That is part of emotional abuse. Belittling someone's feelings, invalidating someone's feelings. Because if I say a joke and it doesn't land well on the other person, they have the right to feel like that about the joke. And I should apologize and never do that again. Even if to me it was the most hilarious thing I've ever said and it was just funny and I enjoyed myself. If someone else doesn't like it, I should not continue to put them through that. Even if I think maybe they're taking it too seriously, they have the right to feel whatever they feel about my joke. You understand? So, back to my family. I lost my train of thought there. I feel like I was going somewhere with that, but then I'll probably come back to it. Back to my family being manipulative to God. Oh my word. I cannot even believe I'm saying this, but it's true. It is true. My family, we we are believers. And I also think no one has the right to judge someone's journey with God, but we can evaluate, all right? As fellow bed, bedren, brethren, what? As fellow believers, okay? Because that word is tough for me, obviously. Um, we can evaluate, rebuke, correct, help each other okay but each person has the right to figure their journey out with god so i'm not necessarily here to judge my family's relationship and journey with god that is their thing that is personal but as a fellow believer not as a family member right now as a fellow believer in christ i am seeing and noticing that my family takes their manipulation so far they don't just manipulate me or other people yes that's where i lost my train of thought that emotional abuse narcissistic abuse it doesn't just end with you you have to notice how they will treat other people some of their friends some of their colleagues maybe not to the extent that they treat you because you are just <laughs> You're an open house. You're a punching bag. It, it's all go to you. But you have to notice that this is just who they are. And if they actually got a chance to live with their friends or colleague for whatever reason, that is how they would also treat them. Because that's just who they are. An abuser will abuse anyone. Okay? As long as they have the opportunity and chance, they will abuse anyone. It's just that it's unfortunate when... You are the one who gets to see and face their full-blown personality. Okay. So I started noticing. And it just, it hit me randomly. That they think they can also manipulate God. They think they can, because most narcissists, and I know this about my family. Oh, my family, they are so lovable. To other people. To other people, they are so lovable. They are charming. They are delightful. And my family, they are just, you know, they are bubbly. They are welcoming. That's how they are around others. And I don't think it's necessarily an act. It is an act to some extent. But I don't think it's necessarily an act. It's just that they have these undesirable traits in them that it's not truly authentic or genuine so a part of it i do believe that 
they are welcoming people, bubbly people, you know, lovable, delightful people, but it is also part of their act. So they can be the most charming, delightful people in front of people. And people love them, okay? Because people don't live with them. And they haven't had to endure the emotional trauma that comes with living with them. So, that's how they are, right? And that helps them being delightful, being charming. And charming not like in a flirtatious way. Like just being this pleasant, loving person, lovable person. That's how they are with people and it wins the hearts of the peoples. I don't know, my words are not coming together, but it wins people. And because something, when it works with one person, when you have mastered something that works with someone or several people, you just keep using it because why mess with the good thing, right? You keep using that trick over and over again. And because for my family, it has worked for so long, you know, them putting on this act, you know, of being delightful, being welcoming, being nice, being kind, you know, it works. It works for them. It has worked numerous times. Now, because you use it from one person to another, one person to another, and it keeps on working. Now you think you can use it on God. Now you think you can just be this pleasant, delightful person, this charming person to God. And then God is just going to be like, oh, I'm so happy with you. And I'm just going to bless you. (laughs) I said this in my other episode that what I don't like about Christian parents when they say something like, oh, just forgive or just have faith in a way as if to just brush off your feelings or what you're going through is that they're basically asking you to act, to put on this act and act for them. And what annoys me is the fact that, but God sees my heart because if I act in front of you, like I'm okay, I'm happy, I have forgiven this person. If I'm putting on this act just to make you happy, it is useless. It is useless because my maker sees and the only person not not person the only being that we should please is god apostle paul says um in the bible that our aim is to please god that is the only being a human being being happy with you does nothing for you in the eternal scheme of things Okay, a hundred, a million people might be happy with you and impressed with you. It will mean nothing because we got eternity and eternities that is still coming. We got the afterlife. We got judgment that is still coming and it will not matter. It will not matter if your mother, your biological mother was happy with you if God was not so I am not I am no longer falling for this trap of thinking that oh if I just make my mother happy. I understand the biblical concept of respecting my mother. Respecting my mother doesn't mean making her my God because we don't think about it like that. You really need to think That you might be making your parents, your parent, your mother, your father, your family, your God. Because you just want to make them happy. Or you just want to respect your family. Or you just want to be kind to people. It shouldn't be at the expense of not pleasing God. God put in those principles and concepts knowing, knowing very well that we can still please him and maintain being kind to other people if being kind or being respectful to other people compromises your walk with Christ then it's not the right kind it's not the right kind of kindness it's not the right kind of respect the only respect that is in line with God's will is the one that doesn't compromise your relationship with Christ Okay, 
I can go on and on about that one, but so they think they can manipulate God. They really do. And so sometimes I see these instances of being angry at God. And and trust me, I, I understand being angry at God. I know I've been angry, mad, upset at God a number of times. We all go through it, okay? We all go through it. It is normal. It's just important that we rebuild that relationship again. And we, we understand that at the end of the day, he's our father. But it, it's part of the journey. Sometimes you are mad at God. Sometimes you are angry because he didn't give you the thing that you prayed for. Because he didn't do what you wanted. And then you come back to your senses and then you know and understand that, okay, you know what, God... Your ways are higher than my ways. You know what's best. And then we keep it moving. Okay. But my family. The reason they get angry sometimes at God. It's because. Even though they're not aware of it. Because they're not aware of this. Okay. Even though they're not aware. That they were trying to be delightful. And charming. And pleasant. And nice. And obeying, quote unquote, obeying, um, obeying God, they were doing it as if to win his heart. Listen, I don't know who said this, but I think it was a live performance. Who said this? It was probably Jonathan, but it was a live gospel performance where he said that you can. You can gain God's love because you never lost it. Even the person who's an atheist, somebody who's a non-believer, somebody who who is of a different religion, nobody, nobody has lost God's love. Okay, you can, you, there's nothing you can do that is going to make you gain more of God's love. The only thing that's standing between God and his children is unholiness and the only way to mend that relationship is by accepting christ jesus as lord and savior then we are reconciled back to god but his love it never ended it's so much so we see that his love never ended because he sent his son jesus christ to die for us and as long as we are in this world we all still have that option to accept Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So the love is there. Imagine if the love is there for a non-believer, an atheist, someone who's of another religion. If God has love for that person, but the only thing that person needs to do is just accept Jesus Christ so that they can be reconciled back to God. Imagine if that person, outside of the Christian of faith, is loved if you you have accepted christ you are reconciled my brother my sister you are loved you have been reconciled you you have been adopted into his sonship you are his child why do you think you need to in a way like impress god listen we obey god We live according to his will because it's the right way to live. Because it is the it's it's the best thing for us. (laughs) It is the best thing for us. Why do we why do we live out God's will as if it's for him? Because he actually instilled it for us for for our best lives. He did it for us. The principles that people are fighting so much against. Like, oh, don't tell me not to do this. Don't tell me to do that. It is in your best interest. It is for you. You think God is the one who needs it? It's for yourself. It's because he loves you so much. He put these principles, these laws in place so that you can live your best life. It's for us. So now imagine my family trying to be delightful, 
be charming with God as if it's going to attain more of his love and more of his attention. He, he already loves you. He's already there. He's just hoping that we live according to his will. And I'm not going to go into a whole rant about this. <laughs> I'm not going to go too much into it, but I'm seeing the manipulation, the tricks, the games that they play. I am seeing it in other areas. And it is a big area, a relationship between a person and God. That is a big area to even have some of these traits showing up. Because unfortunately, somehow we start treating God how we treat other human beings. Like he's not a man. He's not a human being. What works on a human being will not work on God. Because he sees your heart. He knows you. A YouTuber once said that sometimes God will expose you to you. Because these are the type of things, like I said, I don't think my family is aware that sometimes they manipulate God. That they think they can manipulate God and into doing what they want or blessing them with what they want. So sometimes God will expose us to us because he sees what we're doing. But sometimes we're the ones who don't see what we're doing. So he will expose you to yourself. I've had this a couple of times where God exposed me to myself. And I just sat there being like, mm, I thought I was a believer. I thought I wasn't on the right path. But I wasn't. Listen, one of the things that, I'm, that God has blessed me with is self-awareness. And for the longest time, I couldn't admit that because growing up in an emotionally abusive family, you're never allowed to take pride or be proud or acknowledge what you're good at because everything is almost like downplayed like what you're good at is downplayed or you shouldn't make a big deal of that or they're not gonna acknowledge that you're good at that so I couldn't really admit that to myself but I am now seeing it as a blessing and I pray that I never get prideful about it but I remain within the realms of how God wants me to be away because I'm very aware of myself and I'm very aware of other external factors or even people to a certain extent to a great extent I'm very aware and I'm very observant and I now see that as a blessing right so for me because I've been blessed with this sense and level of awareness, I, I can accept when I'm being corrected. I can receive, sometimes it's not easy because it's never easy being corrected. It's never nice being told that you're doing something wrong. It's never nice being exposed to yourself that look at yourself. You thought you were a good Christian woman, look at yourself. You thought you were this prayer warrior, look at yourself. You thought you were kind, look at your. It's never nice. Because sometimes we can, we can lie to ourselves so much so that we believe our own lies. You can, be, you can be so kind that you even believe that, oh my word, I am the most, I'm the kindest person in the world. Whereas you are not, you are a people pleaser. And you're thinking it's kindness. You know what I mean? You can confuse yourself. You can believe your own lies. So, for me, being self-aware, hard as it may be sometimes, I can receive that from God. 
I can receive that from other people. Because sometimes how for me, how God speaks to me is through his Holy Spirit in my soul. You know those things, those promptings, those urges where you just, something doesn't feel right. Or sometimes you you start seeing something in a different eye and it starts hitting you differently. For me, that is how the Holy Spirit, that is how God speaks to me through his Holy Spirit in my heart, in my soul. Okay? So, for me, when God starts to prompt prompt something in me or push me towards something or starts starts mm, flipping things for me and exposing me to myself sometimes it might be hard to accept but I am receptive I receive that now the problem is with narcissists they're not easily receptive They're not willing to be corrected, even by God. And I don't even think God can reach them because sometimes our ego, our pride, some of the things, some of the walls that we have built, they can block God from speaking to us. So if you have blinded yourself with the fact that you are so kind or you are so good or you are you are so amazing those can be shields and ways that block the holy spirit from speaking to you now god being god okay he can push through that when he wants to but we have to remember that faith being a christian has a lot to do with free will so God can't always just budge in, okay? That's not how it always works. He can't always just break down all your shields and just reach you and speak to you and be like, look at this, see this. That's not how it's always going to work. Sometimes he will do it. And for me, this is just one of those things that maybe we don't fully understand or maybe we'll never fully understand in this world that sometimes he will break through and push through all your walls, all your shields when he wants to reach you. But we have to remember that this is about free will. We have a choice. We have to make that choice to let him in. So he can't always be breaking down walls, like breaking and entering into our hearts. We have to make these choices. You know, to let down our guards, to let down the walls, to let down the shields so that he can start to transform us. It has to be a choice. Okay? Christianity is a choice. Accepting Jesus Christ is a choice. But anyway, I'm going to leave it here. And right now I am prompted to, to say a prayer with you. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you would like to do that right now, you can simply say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you died for me. I believe you rose from the dead. And I believe you are seated at the right hand side of the Father interceding for me. I receive you in my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. And now you are part of the kingdom. You are a child of God. You are.